Now for something a little bit different. I happened to be in a local bar and I commented on the fact they were selling uh, some sort of whiskey out of mason jars. Now this wasn't homemade, it was licensed and tax stamped for Pennsylvania. But pouring shots out of a mason jar is not very easy. Normally, you remove the cork or the cap on a bottle of booze and and they replace it with this. The pouring spot goes clear through into the center. This is an air vent. It allows air to enter so the uniform flow exits the spout. Now there is actually no seal around this little dented in space. But by carrying air up into the bottle, uh, the air goes in, the booze comes out. Then they have to clean this occasionally, so they tear this apart and soak these components. I foolishly offered to attach this to here. Now I don't think it's as simple as just drilling a hole uh, big enough for this and shoving this on it. It may be, but I'm probably going to make it too difficult. So I'm going to drill a hole about here and we'll see what I'm going to do. I drilled a hole. I've also roughened up this surface a little bit and the spout will go in like this. I'm going to mark two places here and here. So what I've done now, I've drilled two small holes here, and they'll be covered up by the flange on the spout. I've also sort of pushed these edges downward. You can see this little curved area. There's a good view of it, the whole way around. So this is just standing proud of the uh, flat. I probably haven't used this modeling clay in 15 years. It's probably pretty hard. I'm going to seal up, uh, not the air hole, not the tube, but the area around it. It's not sealed. I'll do that just by taking some modeling clay and filling the void space and wiping it off. I'm going to mount or place and orient the spout the way I wish it to be. So I'm going to take that modeling clay and mash it down, hold the spout onto the lid. Do that all around. Now I have the spout loosely adhered to the top of the lid with the modeling clay. So this is what the underneath looks like. Now this is not daylight you're seeing, you're seeing reflection off of the uh, chrome of the flange. Same way here. 
and you'll see no daylight around there, although you may see it through the tube. I guess not. That's what we have, a slightly dished area here, not very much. Two holes over here. And of course this is exposed because it's a non-solid area here and here. Exposes the void space under the flange of the pourer. I've got it mounted in a vise. Uh, clamped to the pouring spout, not very tight. I've got a piece of wood over here. And I've got a sterret cross level in there. I'm as level as I think I need to be. What I have here is a, a scale. It should tear itself. I can tear it by pushing down on this. Now it hasn't warmed up really. I haven't turned it on for a year. I'm going to put this metal little throwaway lid on it and tear it. So the weight of the lid is not there. I have a bottle of Brownells uh, Industrial Epoxy. This is at least 15 years old. And I'm just going to pour a little bit into my throwaway lid. Whoa. Oh, that was too much. I have a chart. According to this chart, if I have 3.6 grams of resin, I need to bring it up to a total of 4.7 by adding the, adding the hardener. Better check my numbers. Add enough hardener. bring it up to about about 7.3 grams Now, I just have a pointed wooden stick that I'm going to mix until it's all one uniform color. I'm going to keep adding hardener, half a drop or so at a time, until it starts coming out the holes, the small holes. They're vent holes. So I've got epoxy at this near vent hole right now. some of it around the spout.
Now I'm going to look underneath and make sure we don't have a leak. I want to make sure the clay dam is still actually intact. Okay, there we have it coming out the other hole. And that's what I want. This particular epoxy will take 24 hours or so to harden, which gives me lots of time to clean up any messes. I don't like quick drying stuff. I'm old enough that I'm not in a real hurry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just break off the stick. And throw the bulk of it away. And I'll place the tray of epoxy and the stick off to the side with the stick in the tray. That way I'll be able to test the consistency of the epoxy with the uh, tray tomorrow morning. Here's the pouring spout. You see it's these two vent holes are completely covered but except for the slight yellow tint this is completely clear. I've, I've managed to keep it off the rubber seal Here, uh, I've got a little bit of the remnants of the modeling clay. I've got to clean that up a little bit. Some modeling clay left down there. I wish I had a can of brake cleaner, an aerosol can, but I've looked around and I don't seem to have any. But spout is attached firmly so I think they'll be able to pour out of here. The epoxy resin I use is a, I bought through Brownells their trade name is Acroglass and although this might be 20 years old I made a note it was $40. It, it came with enough hardener to take care of this in entire volume. This is uh, 28 fluid ounces. One part of hardener to four parts of this resin here. I make that a 1 to 4 ratio using a digital scale. Now this stuff, you saw me working with, it's fairly liquid and it hardened overnight. This also is available in a quick hardening stuff. Optionally, sometimes you can buy it in a kit, but optionally it comes with this chopped fiberglass flock. Just little short pieces of uh, glass fiber. If you mix some of this in with the uh, mixed uh, hardener and resin, it loses its uh, liquidity and becomes more like a, a paste, depending on how much uh, of this flock you put in it. I know it resists acids, alkalis, pretty high temperatures, very low temperatures. Uh, once it's set up, it's perfect. 
I have links below to some firearm as well as some non-firearm repairs that I use this stuff with. Twenty years ago, Brownells mostly limited its sales to uh, people in the gun trade. But now they'll sell gladly to the public. They have a very good website and very good customer service. They make some suggestion here to see the detailed instructions in the kit. They give you a multi-page instruction sheet. And I'm, I don't know, but probably can download it from their site now. I'm not affiliated with them. I've used them for 35 years in the firearm repair business. They work. They're good people.